Oh, guys, good, you're here. I am so excited. Guess what? Uh, I hope this isn't about your podcast again. Why? Did you finally listen to it? The Green Room Next Door is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Welcome to the Green Room Next Door. You're listening to my mommy and daddy. And now our feature presentation. And he is your host, my mommy and daddy, Kristen Stella Queen. Hello, pups and kittens, and welcome to episode 95 of The Groomer Next Door. I'm your co-host, Chris Green. Sitting next to me is the two-episode podcaster of the day, Sarah. Hello, Mr. Chipper. <laughs> well, I come to you guys with Sarah um, after we're recording um episode 11 of our video podcast which will go up later on this week as well um, a lot of you guys have um, asked us if we would be doing a Newfoundland episode of the podcast and the answer is yes we will <laughs> uh, and this week we will actually um, have it released on YouTube um, details will be on our uh, Facebook page on our uh... on our uh, yeah right <laughs> I uh, forgot my wallet no um so yeah, we, we actually were able to uh, find the time today. I don't know if we found the time. I think we're just making the time. Um, and yeah, so... Yeah, because um, it's, it's 4.30 and I still got to go home and make dinner. Uh, <laughs> we're usually done by now. Um, that's going to be an interesting challenge. Uh, so anyways, this episode we're going to talk about anemia in, in our pets. Um, we actually had a kind of a inspirational kind of epiphany this week when we actually had a dog come in and that's kind of how a lot of our episodes come out is uh we just see things out there and it just kind of comes around so let, let's let's dive right into the uh well, that's really loud sorry i forgot <laughs> this thing picks up everything um well you're in front of a microphone i'm sorry it's is this your fault. is this your first I'm day not, i'm not held accountable <laughs> for the producer's uh, equipment producer i would like to find one <laughs> uh, all right yeah would that be nice to have somebody putting these things together for us nah. oh man that'd be awesome um all right we'll, we'll have let... an actual studio or well we do have a studio well, it's cold right now it is kind of cold out here kind of you wanted to have an outdoor recording well, i didn't want to sit inside eh, man, man, man. Right well, yeah, last week was really rough. A lot of mouth breathers out there I don't want to deal with. All right, so you are 16 weeks smoke-free. Yes. That is awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. How's it going? It's going perfectly fine. It feels like I've never even smoked before in my life. I, I, I've lost uh, that, that whole camaraderie of going outside with you. It was, it was kind of weird today. I opened up my drawer to find um, bandanas because for some reason we are in short, short supply of bandanas in the shop. So I'm hunting high and low for one more bandana and I come across a box or a pack of cigarettes. Did you really? Yes. Interesting. It, I only had one. It was my backup in case I forgot to, you know, pick up some smokes before I got to work. And I saw that I was like, ew, what's this doing? Oh, I know why it's here. Okay. So I continue looking for a bandana. <laughs> You're, you actually had a uh, cigarette stash. Like, I would stash chocolate milk if it didn't need to be refrigerated. 
Oh yeah, you stash cookies or donuts. I do. I actually found some. You're like uh, a squirrel. You stash <laughs> donuts. Okay, that that's actually funny. I was picking up the room today, and I found a snack that I've been wanting to have. It's you know, sealed and everything. It's not like oh it's half eight or anything. No, it's it's brand new. But I've been looking for it for a while, and um, I was really excited about that. <laughs> I was really excited. All right, well, let's dive into the weekly roundup. The weekly roundup, yeehaw. This week in our weekly roundup, uh, we went to work. A lot. A lot, right. For a long time. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see, weekly roundup. Um, I... I, I remember during the week, <laughs> during the week I kept saying to myself, I'm going to remember this, I'm going to remember that, I'm going to, uh, I forgot all of it. I, I, I do know that this week, um, for for us, uh, we started soccer with Claire, which will be in a, the next segment, we'll, which we'll cover. I'm so excited. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting, I mean, I, you know, I guess... I guess in a sense, I always feel weird about talking about ourselves only, but it is a podcast and people are tuning in to hear about what, what's going on with us, which still is bizarre to me. As you're going like, yeah, yeah, shut up, get on to the real stuff. Yeah, go on to the story about what we want to talk about, we want to hear about, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you're you know. a bunch of most uninteresting people in the world. And yet people like us. Go figure. I know. I guess we're, we're more interesting than what you think, or at least what we think. Um, but yeah, it was. Um, we started soccer on Thursday. We we uh, rescheduled practice two times. Yeah, it was yes. a, a Tuesday, then a Wednesday, and then we settled for a Thursday. Thursday. So that was interesting. So that's a that that'll be and going then, on for a few more weeks. I had to cancel my appointment at the most exclusive salon in Rolla, so I can attend Claire's. Soccer you, okay, game, okay. and I lost out on getting my nails. The done. words "exclusive" and "Rolla" have right. never been used in the same this sentence place together. Is fantastic. It's got a very high rating, and they do amazing work. Until I the, finally but, got in, and I canceled because uh, I will not miss a practice for Claire. And you're the team manager, so you actually have to be uh, available for any questions because coaches do not answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> at least that's what they tell you when you take this, this last, class that you actually have to do that they want you to take. Well, last year or last season, the coach's uh, team manager was hardly there. Well, yeah, that was a different story. Um, dogs that said that that stood out was uh, one, and that's that was uh, because it showed signs of anemia, um, yeah. which we'll we'll discuss that later. Um, but everybody was about the same. Um, we, we, again, were underwater, it seems like, most of the week where we had a lot of dogs. Um, one one of the days, somebody didn't even uh, decide to put it down in a book. Uh, I forgot to book an appointment. No, 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 no. You booked the appointment. You forgot to write it in the book. Yeah. So, hi, I'm here for my appointment. Oh. And, and there's two cockers sitting in the uh, ready to be... Oh boy! Yeah, you. Oops. You you love me. Very rarely do I ever screw up. Weekly. And... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, scheduling part you can sometimes you know set things up by phone, uh, because Sarah will do a text groomer, and they'll send her a message, and she'll prepare to actually put it in the book. And then um, something distracts me, probably like a Craig or. Like a Laura or like a Chris. Well, yeah, of distracts course. Distracts me, and I don't actually get it put down into the books. Well, it's like or with me, I have a, a grooming request to actually look in the books tomorrow. So uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> that'll be fun to actually remember that. Which I'll remember. I know I'll remember. Um, so let's see um anything that, that stood out this week for you besides soccer um no other than the flea field dog um which we'll talk about a little bit later um everything else was pretty standard just it really was busy and then it wasn't busy and then it was busy and then we got out of work an hour early one time was yeah like, which was funny we got out of work an hour early and then i think the next day we were an hour later yeah, yeah. so it all balances out uh yeah sure okay uh, I'll, I'll go with no but okay <laughs> all right well 
I know it's kind of a, a rapid episode in a sense, but I, I don't We're remember. We're kind of tired and we want to... I, I don't really remember anything else. I don't think anything really popped up. Nothing really I mean, did. We didn't have any psychotic dogs. No, no, nobody was crazy. I think I got bit once, I thought. Yeah, and I think one tried to get me too. I know I'm Oh, I remember, dogs. I remember Chinese Crescent. <laughs> no, that wasn't this way. Yeah, it was. It was like it was. Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, it was Monday. No, it was Monday. Not the colored one. The one I'm thinking of. The Chinese Crescent. We've only had one in the past couple months, and that was a couple weeks ago. I colored it. <sighs> That's right. Like Who am I two. thinking of? Then who am I thinking of? I haven't done any color this week. No, it wasn't color. Oh, well. I don't remember. It was my first dog of the week, and I remember it was... I thought it was. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Well, that's... Like always. That, that, this is what happens when, you know, you have uh, onset... Of... I know what happened this yes. week. Yes. You got your glasses. Oh, boy. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Chris is now a proud owner of some very nice... Well, people that... said people kept calling me stupid, so I had to prove them otherwise. So I bought a pair of glasses, so that now people will actually think I'm smart. Yeah, uh huh. That's why. So we've he underplayed on how bad his eyesight was, and uh, I was like, okay, well, we'll just get you a test. So how about just go in for an exam? They're fifty bucks. Fine, go in for an exam and kind of find out. And they give me one of those red sticks. The, huh? blind, the blind sticks. Oh. So I can walk around and see where oh. I'm going. <laughs> well, then, uh, a couple days later, I mean, it was really quick that got your glasses it back. It really was. It went on a Saturday, and they had it by a Thursday. So, yeah, it wasn't bad. And they picked up, and I saw the glasses and saw the the two different prescriptions. I'm like, holy cow. Those are some, there's a lot of difference. And I'm like, yeah, he's got a high prescription. I was like, oh. Oh, so you were downplaying how bad you, you could see. I was like, no wonder you didn't see all this stuff that I kept saying. Don't you see that right there? <laughs> what no. are you talking about? It all looks the same to me. It did look. Uh. It all, yeah, it all <laughs> blended together. Well, yeah. Now it's weird to actually adjust to wearing glasses. That is strange. For all of you who wear glasses, you kind of can understand what I'm saying here. Especially when you have one prescription, one, one lens that's you know stronger than the other. Um, it's really hard to adjust. You can't drive wearing them because everything's right a little off. Yeah, I mean, it's starting to come into focus now. I mean, it's not as bad as it was the first day, um, and I wasn't exactly what you call good yesterday. I didn't wear them yesterday, but I did wear them Friday. Uh, I didn't wear them Saturday, but it was so much going on yesterday. I couldn't. I was between um, pl you know the soccer field, and then oh, I know what we needed to talk about what strut your butt was yesterday. That's oh, what it was course. part of the weekly roundup. What 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 kind of host are you? <laughs> One that wasn't able to be there very long. That is long. true. Well, that's true. I mean, we had a, a morning game, and that was hard. But Strut Your Mutt was on Saturday. Um, I have a video that I want to put together. We'll, we'll see how I can get that all together. Because, um, you know, I, I do have work Monday through Friday, and soccer on Thursdays, as we mentioned. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a daughter that requires a great deal of attention and a wife that is completely always requiring attention no stop <laughs> but she didn't deny it folks um but yeah yesterday was strut your mutt and um right here in rolla uh, proud to actually say that they raised over three thousand mm -hmm. dollars so congratulations to Picall. they definitely do a great deal of good um and locally it is a necessity to have uh, such a wonderful organization uh, the other thing is, is that we, you know, we did a donation. We donated uh, one groom each, uh, yep. part of a, a nice little basket of variety of different things. Uh, what was yeah, in that we, basket? We have to limit on how much the yeah. the certificate's worth because, you know, somebody can buy a twenty-five dollar gift certificate or a gift certificate for, you know, fairly inexpensive, and they want to get one hundred and fifty dollars worth of a groom done. So it's got to be very particular. So we did um, two grooms, $35 each. And if the groom goes over that, the owner must pay the difference. And then there was two baskets that went with it. One basket was, um, well, one basket had a leash and collar, um, some dog food. And the other one had some dog food and a bowl and some treats. 
um, all in all, just a bunch of cool stuff that Shadow had donated, and then the grooms were donated by us. Um, it actually went over the projected amount of the actual... Yeah, the bid went for higher than what the value was, which was, which was really awesome. cool. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, really it was awesome. it was bought by somebody that, you know, we highly respect. You've you've known her for a long time. She did your first years. article in the paper here. Yeah, her husband. Or her husband, exactly. Um, and you know, that's that's always the cool part. And so. then her husband also did a re rewrite. <laughs> the rewrite. Um, for the one guy who absolutely obliter obliterated the <sighs> donation that okay we to okay i got a sidebar to that um you know i don't have our all of our articles articles posted online i i you know i want to scan all of the articles and put them on our website but you know what it, it holds me back to do it because i don't want to be this vain arrogant snot that's like hey look at me man i've been in the paper look at our articles i don't really want to be that person i don't know why he's like a cheech and chong type of guy i don't know, I, I don't know why your um, alter ego is kind of different. well lots of the voices in my head you know blend different, together at some point different right. accents i guess yeah right but I, you know, I, I don't. I want to put it up there, but I don't. It's, it's kind of one of those things. I kind of want to hear what people think. You know, if they want to see them, then it's fine. Um, like last week was our our one year uh, mark since we were actually in the paper for this podcast uh, in a local interview we were we did here uh, was a year ago, and you know, it was on our Facebook page. I put the link and everything. You know, paying respect to it. But you know, for the most part, I just don't. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We want to say a very big thank you to Craig and Allie for... I don't know who either of those people are. For manning the nail uh, the nail trim booth at Straight Your Mutt since Chris and I had Claire's soccer game to attend. Um, because of them, they raised over $40 for the actual uh, event. And um, all, do all donations went straight to Pacal. $5 per nail trim. And uh, for not having as many, uh, start over. I've been talking for so long. <laughs> well, Do two shows is not uh, easy, folks. With the fact that Strike Your Mutt was held on the same day as soccer, a lot of people didn't attend because their kids were playing. Uh, for that to happen and still have forty dollars worth of nail trims, that's pretty darn good. Right. Um, last year when Strut Your Mutt landed on a Saturday with nothing else going on in Rolla, we were able to do uh, $65 in nail trims. Right. So he's right up in there, right where he's supposed to be. Um, but thanks to Allie and Craig, and then their buddy Tyler came along to hang out too. So that was kind of nifty, um, just seeing so much support. We do it because we want to. We don't do it because we need customers. Oh, we yeah. have enough <laughs> to keep us busy for a very long time. Um, but it was just, it was great to know that they gave up their Saturday to come do something that I said yes to and come to find out that soccer went on. I would have had to cancel and say, I'm sorry, I can't. And they would have lost out on the money. Or someone else that's not as trained to do nail trims would have to do them. Very true. But uh, it was great. Just thank you, Craig, and thank you, Allie. I still don't know who either of those people uh -huh. are. All right. Well, let's move on to this week's A Moment with Claire. Buddy, a boy, make a big noise. Play in the street, gonna be a big man someday. You got mud on your face. You big disgrace. Kicking your can all over the place. We will, we will watch you. And now, a moment with Claire. I am standing next to Claire Green after the first game of her soccer game in U7. Wow, that's so weird to say. Um, it is September the 19th. And how was your first game? Good. I'm the dark blue team. They call it Navy. Yes, it is Navy. Yep. So, tell us about your game. We had four goals, I mean, uh, seven goals, and they only had two. Like, the, we played against Josh Brown. 
Yeah, we played against your former coach, um, which is weird because this season I'm now the coach of the team of a different team, uh, and now he's an assistant coach of a different team. It's all weird. All the kids are almost gone. We have a whole bunch of new kids. What was that like? That was, like, weird. Uh-huh. Yeah. We had a uh, one girl that is my team, that's our team, but... We get kind of confused in our names that Clara and Clara, Claire. Right, Clara is one, and you're Claire. Yeah, I'm not going to sit by her again in the game, because we get squished together with our names. Yeah, we're actually going to put you guys in different uh, lines so that you're uh, not on the same squad. So it'll make it less confusing for you. Yeah, so we don't get uh, the same name like uh. The girl is uh, Claire, and I'm Clara. Try that. Why don't we try that again? What's your name? I'm Claire, and she's Clara, because we don't want to get mixed up Claire and Clara to me. Yeah, see, even you got mixed up right there. You called yourself Clara. That's <laughs> just funny. Um, yeah, you guys did really well today. Um, now, what was weird was... You guys aren't on two separate fields like you used to be. You're all on one field, and we actually rotated your squads out. That was strange. Was that weird for you? Yeah, but Clara, she didn't pass the ball to me. I passed it to her. She didn't pass it to me. Well, we got to work on both of you on your passing. Well, this concludes the very first practice, no, first game. Oh, wow, we've already done practice. That's right. Uh, first game of the season. Uh, we have five games this year. Uh, for the fall league and that is another difference for us we're used to only four so um until next week um well what do you want to say uh i don't know okay well how about bye-bye bye-bye so it's a, a new little segment you know we we always do her um interviews after soccer games and um she deserves her own little moment her own little theme song her own little little things that we're, we want to do i mean this podcast Let's be honest. It was made, you know, for her. Um, and it, you know, reaches out to everybody and it does good all over the place. So, And I do have to say, good job on that intro song. That was fantastic. That patience it took to get a seven-year-old to do several different segments to <laughs> put into one song is just, it goes up and over my head. I have all the patience in the world for a dog. I have all the patience in the world for certain things. But to do something like this, it had to have been extremely difficult, but good job. It was a lot of fun, actually. We, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to do another one um, later on today, depending on, on if I can get it. Either we'll go in this podcast or next, but, um, you know, it's, it's she's really, really easy to work with. And, look, she's more talented than Justin Bieber, so that, <laughs> that, that already right out the door. I mean, come on. Um, but it's it's fun to actually make little things with her. She she looks at it and goes, okay, whatever, you know, daddy does this. I mean, I, I said to her last night when I after I, I recorded it and put it together, I said to her, what do you think? She goes, oh, it's okay. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean it's okay? You don't like it? No, I like it. I go, well, you know, that that's kind of, you know, not something that a lot of, you know, people can do. And she goes, well, of course you can. You're a podcaster. I'm like, that doesn't really mean anything. I mean, there are people that are right now. Other people doing podcasts saying, yeah, right. Well, right? Mean that don't mean nothing. Actually, people who are listening to other podcasts yeah. are going, that means nothing. So, yeah, it's, you know, do we have fun doing all this stuff? Yes. No. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. I had to drag you out here. Uh, you don't have to go home and make dinner. Oh, it's not going to be a hard night. All right, let's move on to uh, GND News. All right, this week on GND News, we have two really unique stories for you. Uh, following on the trend that we usually do, and that is um, we try to you know, almost bridge our stories together. Um, this week, um, from last week, we had talked about South Korea and their, you know, lovely, you know, <laughs> ways. Um, and we've talked about, um, you know, how they like to eat dog meat and everything else. Well, there was um, a a ASPCA oh, International. Yeah. Um, who actually went out to South Korea and you know what? 
gonna let them tell the story. What do you think? Yeah. So, Claire, play the clip. Saved from a horrible fate, dogs rescued from a meat farm are now safe at a local shelter. Thanks for joining us tonight for Fox 40 News at 10. I'm Nicole Comstock. Tonight, those four dogs are at the Placer SPCA in Roseville, but they came all the way from South uh, South Korea. The goal now is to get those dogs back healthy again. Fox 40's Ben DC joins us live tonight. And Ben, how are they holding up right now? Well, they're they're happy, a little bit bewildered, Nicole. You know, it may sound strange, but the climate right now is perfect for this kind of work because of the upcoming Winter Olympics in Korea in 2018. The eyes of the world are on that nation, and so the Humane Society International believes now is the time to exert some pressure to bring some dogs out of these farming circumstances, and that's exactly what they've, they've done. Dogs here in Roseville, this dog park in Roseville are about to get some new neighbors from a very far away land. So how do you say woof woof in Korean? Okay, same as English, but not everything is the same. There are farmers who farm dogs for food in Korea. This is one of those farms. On September 15th, Humane Society International paid the farmer to give up his pack. Then they packed them up and shipped them to California. Four of the dogs have just landed at the Placer SPCA in Roseville. So how they look, Doc? They look pretty good. Um, they're thin. They're a little dehydrated. That is an awful lot of tail wagging for a dog that's just traveled 5,620 miles to get to his new home. It becomes pretty clear that a dog raised to be butchered can still make a good family pet. It was such a joy to bring that big guy into our facility and have him be so doofy and just so happy. But should they be pets? Should we be exerting our Western values over the question of what animals are okay to eat and what animals are okay to pet in another country, another culture? And certainly no animal should be subject to the cruel environments in which these dogs were raised. So I think the first and foremost, that's what we have to realize. The situation that they were in was filthy um, and just deplorable. Humane Society International estimates two million dogs are consumed as meat in Korea each year. Now, all four dogs are Mastiff mixes. They're going to be awfully big, already are awfully big. They have a little healing to do, a little acclimating to do, but they should be available for adoption soon at the Placer SPCA here in Roseville. Reporting live from Roseville, Ben DC, Fox 40 News. All right, so <laughs> before we actually start recording uh, this part, we actually had, you know, gone to the same <laughs> conclusions to this, but say what you just told me um, before we hit record. When they went and uh, purchased the dogs from the farmer. farmer yeah, let's use the really politically the correct term. <laughs> it's just so the farmer can go and buy some more and breed some more and, and get more dogs to sell off for food. Um, now, it does raise an interesting question. You know, who are we to enforce our Western views views on them? Uh, if you look in, in in the U.S., even in dog food, let's go as basic as dog food. There's dog food with bison in them. Okay, well, bison's not a pet you have at home. Okay, there's deer. I would know, like to have venison. a bison at home. So there's there's venison that's in the dog in dog food. Well, no, deer aren't exactly what you welcome into your house and pet or normal people. Um, and we're not normal. Look, <laughs> they're beautiful to look at. All right, then you look at duck. Ducks in a lot of food. Uh, well, again, ducks are fun to feed and fun to look at. And, I and love the hockey team and the college football team. And then they get slaughtered and put into dog food. All right. Well, then you go a little bit smaller and you think about a rabbit. I love I love rabbits. We've See, owned yeah. we've owned four, five, five I think. And we rescued a couple of them, and then we bought three of them. Yeah, when I say I love them, I don't want to eat them. I would never eat rabbit, but I love them as pets. I pet them. We we, we were able to litter box train our rabbits, 
we leash trained our rabbits. I'm serious, folks. Yeah, this is not we a joke. We had a ferret leash and collar at the harness and leash on our bunnies, and we walked them down the street. Yep. Okay. We're we, those kind of people. Yes. We had them at Starbucks outside. We would sit outside while they're playing around on their leashes, and we're sipping our um, our coffee. Uh, Nothing like a latte and a bunny on a leash. Exactly. And really relaxing. And then... No and sarcasm then, either. That's true. Chris's sarcasm comes in when he names them. <laughs> okay. Tell us, what do you name the, our first two? Our very first bunny I named Dinner. And then our second bunny, which was your bunny, yes. I named Dessert. Yes. And then we had a third bunny, which we named Lollipop. Called him Lolly for short. That was on you. Yes, I know. And Lolly, I would have called him brunch. Was a lop-eared bunny. Kind of found it was a male. We got him too young. Where we, the people who sexed him said it was a female. No, it was a male. Kind of find out my female bunny had babies, and it was because dessert got along with Lolly very well. I thought so that we dinner had, ended up being the male. No, it was Lolly. We had to give oh. him to a friend. Um, another. It was the manager of the pet salon I worked at. Uh, so it didn't just go into some random home. I knew what home he went to. Uh, but we loved our pets. Uh, dessert sat behind on my neck, you know, behind my neck in the, the headrest of the car. Yep. As I drove everywhere. That's not, that's not safe. I'm just saying that, that's not safe. It was safe. She stayed still. She did stay still. I'll give we you that. We washed them. We brushed them. We cleaned their ears. And we, we kept them the for nails. our very own. I mean, mm -hmm. they're our pets. But yet they're slaughtered and put into dog food. True. Okay, let's take it one other step. It, they're actually hunted. Right. And they're used for food. Right. Small game. Um, you look at all these other um, different types of meat that is used for just basic dog food. Um, you know, you can you can make the claim. Could, yeah, it could be completely taboo to another country. Oh my gosh, you're eating bunny. Right. It's like some country would be like. You eat cow? You eat cow? Oh right. my gosh, you yeah. eat pig? Yeah. How dare you? Yeah. So it's taboo in different countries. Well, for us, it's taboo to eat dog due to the fact that dogs are a loving part of our family. And I, I don't know what the percentage is, but I'm pretty sure it's close to at least 70, 80% of, of Americans own an animal at some point in their life. Well, it's, it's, it's like you're saying, you know, when I lived down in the Middle East, um, there were a lot of parts of it that will not eat any kind of cow, yeah. and they're progressively they won't drink changing. The milk from it. They oh, won't and their eat milk is terrible. From it. Yeah. Milk is terrible out there. Um, but yeah, the uh, they will not. Now there are there are places that are actually progressing. Um, where I was, they would not. But they actually will have street vendors selling, you know, beef right there on, you know, cooked right there on the, on the street corner and you can get like a sandwich or whatever in, in surrounding parts. But where I was, no, it was still not like that, which is weird. Yeah, so on one hand, it's extremely taboo to do that, but what we do is extremely taboo to them. The part that drives me nuts that we should stop in our own country before we start helping others trying to, you know, change their views is uh, veal. Veal needs to be stopped in America. Veal is horrible. You know, people, uh, they eat that just like nobody's business because it's so tender and stuff. Well, yeah, it's a baby cow that doesn't get to move for its life. Right. Its muscles are completely weakened because it can't do anything. It's locked in a box and, and then killed and then people eat. And I'm going to take this this story one one little step up. I mean, I'm sure all of you have uh, have seen it. Where you know, like Foster Farms and Tyson and other other um, production meat uh, companies, they uh, outsource to different farms around the U.S. and Canada. Look at the conditions that those animals are in. They're slaughtered, and the way it's done is they're, barbaric. Yeah, they 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 castrate the pigs, or, and just snip, snip, and pull, and that's how they castrate pigs without right. anesthetics, without antibiotics, that, or not antibiotics, but a sterile environment. Right. They just go and do it. Um, the ethical treatment of animals is what needs to be enforced. Right, right. Uh, that needs to be started there. No matter where in the world this happens, the ethical treatment needs to happen. They need to not be in their own filth. They need to be taken care of. Right. You know, uh, 
with the dogs, dogs in general need their nails trimmed, they need to make sure their ears are cleaned, uh, make sure they're fed properly and with enough food, um, hydrated, vet visits. Well, you've, you've heard about it already. They're malnourished, they're dehydrated, uh, emaciated. You know, all of these things that you actually hear about. I mean, it, that's the part where you gotta start first. Yeah, that, exactly, sure the exactly. The treatment's taken care of first. But, you know, what I'm saying is, as much as I don't agree with dog farming and all of these different bad behaviors I see around, you know, it is true. And you talk about me with my volume on my phone. That would be your daughter who did that to me. Uh huh. Okay. I, yeah. Uh huh. I, I know, right? Uh huh. I, I forgot. Turn mine down yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Off. Yours will. <laughs> at, le at least, at least we have funny ringtones. Um, but yeah, you know, you look at it and you go, you know, we're we we have our own mistakes that we're making, and and we're the first ones to actually, you know, jump on top of it. Uh, you know, I don't understand who brought a truck into a live studio audience. I mean, seriously, who brought a truck in here? It was a blower. <laughs> oh, we're on a sporting event? Oh, okay. But um, we try as hard as we can, and uh, we do a lot of research on where our, our meat comes from. Uh, we rarely eat red meat. It is actually pretty rare. It's not for any reason. What do you say? It's rare. Uh, I get it. No pun we stick with poultry, mostly. Yeah. Chicken and turkey. Yeah. And it's nothing really just, they're easier to cook. And a lot of quick recipes can happen with chicken than it can with well, any kind of We're meat. not having meat tonight. You know, I am. I'm having roast beef, baby. No, you're not. Yes, on my grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, I'm that's right. Okay, it. never like mind. Milk. Never mind. Um, anyhow. But, like, the chicken that we have is <laughs> all... did not come out right at all, by the way. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> goaded me into that. <laughs> uh, if, anybody can pick, if anybody wants to pick up the joke in that one, go for it. <laughs> I'm done with you. I'm going to... Oh, you're... Maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to talk anymore, because now I feel like a hypocrite. <laughs> Anywho, our chicken is from an absolutely free range area. Um, it is also slaughtered in a, um, a very humane way, as best or as humane as you can be when it comes to slaughtering. Would you stop laughing? I'm sorry, that was too good. This is a serious moment right now. I'm sorry, I found that to be very funny. I hope your arm hurts. It does. So, we do what we can to do our part. Like, a lot of people like to uh, reduce their carbon footprint. We like to make sure that the animals that we do eat are taken care of first. That is true. And it's not only for the quality of life that they have for their short period of time, it's also for the meat that we ingest too. If we have an animal that is full of nothing but antibiotics and pesticides, uh, uh, PEDs, even yeah. though it would just be, it wouldn't be performance enhancement, it would just be growth enhancement, G yeah, GMOs, GEDs. GMO, GMOs, yeah, well, was, genetically something or other. Yeah, I, that's why I like mine better. GMOs. Um, <laughs> so by doing that, it helps us with eating clean. Um, and Chris Snip, stop! I'm sorry, I found that to be very funny. I'm not. I'm trying to get done. We gotta go home and eat that meat. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Anywho, yeah. but like I said, humanely start there. But again, America needs to stop eating meat. Well, we, you know, I love, I look, I know of a couple companies out there that send out um, investigators, and they're undercover. Um, I was actually going to do it. I've, I mentioned this on previous podcasts. I was going to do it. Um, one of the reasons why I, I'm not is I really don't want to, you know, travel and be away from family. We, <laughs> I've done it twice. Um, well, then I don't think you can handle seeing I don't that think I could handle it. These investigators have to participate <laughs> in these actions. They can't just say, no, I'm not going to do it. It goes against my ethical code. And then they're like, oh, well, we got to be careful of this person. We're not going to do anything yeah, normally right? around them. Yeah. So they have to partake, partake in this. It's horrible. It's kind of like a, a undercover drug officer. Um, they might have to test this, the or sample the product just to show that they're not a You watch a lot of movies. Yes, I do. Okay. So. 
All right, well, I've let's, heard it's true. Let's but, move on to our well, second story, unless you have more to go. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember all that. There was another part to it, but... I thought it was a great um, story. I mean, I, I, I don't I don't disagree with, you know, going out there and rescuing these dogs. I mean, unfortunately, like Sarah well, mentioned, there's, there's, he's there's, just going to go out there and buy more. And, and, and there's so many dogs here that need help. You're, you're talking about paying off the farmer, okay? Then you're taking these four dogs, which I'm pretty sure that no, farmer... No, there's more than that. Yeah, they had a lot of dogs. I mean, they, they were... for these dogs to fly yes. over from South Korea to California. What do you say? Was it how many thousands of miles away? They said 5,000 because something? South Korea and California, so they are actually a lot closer That's than so. if we went. I mean, I was 8,000, so... Oh, yeah. But what I'm saying is that they paid to have them flown out, yep. paid for veterinarian, um, play, paid for food, paid for everything to get vetted and healthy again. And yet, that money to take those dogs from South Korea to America, that money right there could be used for more pets that are running the streets. Uh, the dogs are running loose in Detroit right now. Well, so are the people. You know? Right. And I mean, it goes the same. For like the celebrities that bring over like um uh, well Bacchus, Bacchus did it did. with the Russian dogs. You know, he did a couple Sochi and something else. But for the most part that money could have been used for here. Right. You know, when uh, like children that are adopted from other countries, they win the lottery and be able to get adopted by a rich person in the US. And it probably is best doing it that way because the children in orphanage orphanages here have a better outcome than an orphanages orphanages in the deepest darkest parts of Africa. And they don't have roast beef on their grilled cheese. That's smack you. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm just saying is that that money could have gone to the homeless pets here in the U.S. Um, we support the ASPCA. We've sent them money. We've done donations. We've done fundraisers for them. Uh, oh yeah, but, nothing against them for what no, they're doing. I just don't 100% agree with it. I mean, I'm glad a life was saved no matter what. Lots of lives were saved. Um, I hope it brings but awareness for like, the Winter Olympics, though. I, I That just makes me mad. I don't think it should be held there at all. I don't think it should be. But, I, I mean, I, I don't think any of those countries again, deserve it. that's my Western beliefs being forced onto other countries. Well, it's, it's the... They're not... Their mindset is not where a lot of the world is they are behind in a lot of different a things a lot of countries are so far behind i agree and and you know we we've got our our downfalls too but i think we talked the heck out of that i think so all right let's move on to our second story um this actually came from the same state we're in except it's out in kansas city um now i you know was it kansas city missouri kansas city uh kansas no kansas city missouri okay so um it was a, it was a, it was a, yeah, let's just, you know, Claire, you know, Claire, let's play that clip. Dozens of dogs are on the mend after a tip that led investigators to a puppy mill. KCTV fans, Josh Marshall is live with new details about what those dogs were forced to live in. Josh. Ellen, remember at five o'clock, I told you about the two inches of feces lining the floors inside. I want to put that into perspective for you tonight. We watched rescue workers take plastic bags. They put them over their feet just so they could walk on top of the mush inside the house. <laughs> Behind the flowered landscaping and neatly manicured lawn, there was a secret. I just can't believe it. I was shocked. And I was sad. Cindy Neal drives past the breeder's house daily. She said the homeowner was open about breeding dogs, but never mentioned there were 48 of them living in their own filth. That's awful. One by one, Great Plains SPCA walked through it all, removing 25 dogs inside the house and another 23 living in cages outside. The first load out was all dogs that needed medical treatment right away. Some... Uh, definitely needed to be seen by a vet. Jackson County Sheriff Mike Sharp's deputies confirmed the breeder wasn't registered. Without a tip, it's hard to know how long this operation could have lasted. I just feel horrible I didn't know ahead of time so that I could have called, because I would have called. The puppy mill's owner is being held in Jackson County Jail while prosecutors sort out what she can be charged with. Live in Oak Grove, Josh Marshall, KCTV 5 News.
Josh, thank you. Tonight, new details about what will happen to those puppies taken from the breeder. The Great Plains SPCA in Independence is taking the dogs in. There are nearly 50 dogs, as Josh mentioned, mostly American Eskimos and one Shih Tzu. Many of them arrived late today to be treated, vaccinated, and fixed, and they were starving. We are giving them food because a lot of them all are malnourished at this point. So we're trying to get food in their bodies. A lot of them are scrambling for the food like it's been days since they've eaten. Some real cute dogs. Great Plains also says the majority of the dogs have been living on concrete or gravel. For those that will not need special care, they will be up for adoption soon. 48 dogs. Okay, one thing I do want to clarify. 48 dogs. And how many didn't? <laughs> okay, go on. Would you like to tell the joke so people... Ah, <sighs> fine. There's 30 cows in the field, 28 chickens. How many didn't? How many didn't? 30 cows, 40... 30 cows, 28 chickens. How many didn't? Go on. <laughs> so, anyway, I want to clarify that these dogs were not uh, just American Eskimos. They were miniature American Eskimos. So don't think there's a bunch of big fluffy dogs that were shoved in a house. 48. How many did it? <laughs> 10? <laughs> but anyway. Um, <laughs> We're well, they were that. all, they were all, um, malnourished, so 48. None of them And ate. 10 didn't. <laughs> but they're miniature American Eskimos. Uh, they are, American Eskimos are just gorgeous. The miniatures are just as they awesome. They are gorgeous. And they're sweet, they're fun, um, they're a great breed. But here you go, we're having problems now with... Uh, pet hoarding. No, this isn't. This is worse than pet hoarding. Pet That's hoarding, true. You're right. It is worse. Pet hoarding. I would say that the person needs to file or needs to plead criminally insane, or at least insane. Yeah, because you're right. The problem lies deeper than just hoarding. There's something wrong. But this isn't hoarding. You're right. This was a backyard breeder. Yes. Who just kept breeding them and breeding them and breeding them because they wanted to make money. Which, another word for what Sarah's saying is a uh, puppy mill. Yes. And this puppy mill is just absolutely disgusting. What normally happens, since they said a few were able to get vetted and adopted out, that means those few were used as, say, oh yeah, this was the mother and this was the father and here's the baby. So you can see the genetics. Yeah, catalog. Which most of the time isn't the case. They keep two really good, really pretty dogs, nice and neat. And then the other ones are just shoved in kennels. Um, the unfortunate side is that there were so many of them that were sick and had to get medical attention. Um, did they say, I forgot if they said how many needed medical attention. You know, I forgot, but, but there, was, there was a few. Yeah. Uh, this lady needs to actually be tried and found guilty and the harshest punishment possible needs to be forced upon this woman. Um, well, she's going to have at least possible. 48 counts of, of animal, animal abuse, animal cruelty, yeah. animal cruelty oh, neglect. Of Newfoundland. Ah. Oh, tune in to our next podcast or video <laughs> podcast. No, um, it no, it was, I was telling the dog. So, um... Yeah, you know, when you look at it, I mean, I, I know that the, the prosecutor is going to um, look into this and they're really going to, to really do some some real hard time on her. Um, but I don't, I, you know what, from all, all points examined, this woman, you know, not only did she, she neglected these dogs destroyed this house in filth which created a toxic dumping ground and she deceived so many people I mean how long has this woman been doing this and you know what, what gets me is that she was not yet I think they said she's approximately like 78 years old so if she's this old she's been doing this for decades
Yeah. And, and, and it could probably start out as simple as just a, uh, you know, wanting to breathe a litter or two. And got bigger from there. And what you hear in the background is a, a Newfie <laughs> barking in their Mercedes while their dad goes and picks up uh, uh, food. <laughs> and a uh, quick story that uh, the, uh, the Newfie has a Weimariner in there with it. I saw that. Um, you know, one thing that I, I also noticed, um, not only about her age, um, and I just lost it when you when you said Weimariner. Wow, I just completely. There was something else that, about that story that I, I. Oh, I remember what it was. Um, Missouri is very largely known as a puppy mill state. They're one of the top ten. Yep. Um, states for puppy mills, and it is just. It's sickening. It is. I am, um, with the unfortunate side of being in a state that has you know top ten of the most disgusting puppy mills is that as groomers, we have to groom a lot of dogs that are rescued from puppy mills. Oh yeah. And when you groom a puppy mill dog, it is extremely difficult. We had one this week. <laughs> yes, that we did. That was one thing I was gonna mention in the weekly roundup that I forgot. Um, we actually groomed a couple. One, um, her name's Abby. She's a little white Maltese, gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. But she was kept in such a tiny kennel for so long that anytime she's put into even a large kennel, she spins around in circles. And the entire time, spinning in circles, 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 circles. She doesn't want to be touched, doesn't want to be held. Uh, but she does love the, the owners. It took a couple years, but ended up getting real close with the owners and, and finally decided to have that bond. Because a puppy from a puppy mill is kind of like a feral cat. It really doesn't want any human interaction because the only human interaction that they had was to either shove just a tiny bit of food in their kennel, a little bit of water, and stuck in their own poo. So human interaction for a puppy mill pup isn't very good. They don't trust. No. And it's very, very unfortunate. That's, that's definitely one of the sides about doing this podcast is that we get the opportunity of seeing a lot of these different things that we discuss or you hear in the news. You actually get to hear it from a different perspective, from a, a hands-on perspective like this. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just it's the house is probably going to have to be condemned. Oh, it's being demolished. And, and, yeah. yeah. Because that much feces where they actually have to cover their feet to walk in. That's pretty bad. Yeah, that's, that was crazy. I mean, having to wear masks. And we've heard about it locally. We've heard about these things locally. There was one that was just in the uh, county, oh, not the county, but this little town over from where we are. There was a situation like that um, within the last year. It was pretty bad. Um, so would you say that that concludes your, your part? Okay, well, I think we can easily say that that concludes GND News for this week. Well, on to our top subject of the day. Now, this, this subject actually came about this week because we had a dog that was anemic. And, um, you know... He we'll, showed signs. He showed signs, exactly. That's a better way of putting it. <coughs> um, but to better understand anemia in our pets, um, there's an actual vet that I've, I've had on... I've had different clips from her on different podcasts named Dr. Becker. Um, really has some really good tips. I mean, I've listened to other things that she's done um, that I don't put on the podcast. She's, yeah, she's a little more thorough, and I, I don't know. I just really like what she has to say. Now, it's a longer clip, and but it's uh, it's, it's in depth yes. and it's thorough. The best bet is to hang on and listen to it all. Yes, um, and we're, we're, parts, we have was, parts that we have to add into it. Yeah, part of it was kind of hard for me to hang on to listen to myself, but. It's actually something really nice to know to kind of, you know, keep your eye out in case you see certain things. And to better understand, maybe you have a dog or cat that actually shows signs of anemia, or maybe you actually have that you already have had treated. So this gives you a better understanding, um, what not. But you know, definitely want to make sure we we raise health awareness. And uh, anemia was definitely something we wanted to mention. So Claire play that clip. Hi, this is Dr. Karen Becker and today we're going to discuss anemia in pets. Anemia is a condition in which there are an abnormally low number of red blood cells called erythrocytes or hemoglobin in the blood. 
Hemoglobin is a protein molecule inside red blood cells. Its job is to move oxygen in the blood to all of the tissues of the body. As red blood cells age, they have an average lifespan of about two months or are damaged. They are collected by the spleen and removed from circulation. Part of the hemoglobin molecule is recycled to the bone marrow to be included in new red blood cells. Other parts are excreted by the liver. There are three causes of anemia, blood loss, destruction of red blood cells, also called hemolytic anemia, and insufficient production of red blood cells, also called aplastic anemia, which is the cause of about 80% of feline anemias. Anemia caused by blood loss can result from trauma, surgery, or another bleeding disorder that results in a sudden reduction of the overall numbers of circulating red blood cells. However, anemia from blood loss can also be the result of a slower chronic condition, including bleeding in the GI tract due to ulcers, internal or external parasites, cancer, as well as a bunch of other conditions. Hemolytic anemia is caused by the destruction or shortened lifespan of red blood cells, which means there is a low overall circulating red blood cell volume. This type of anemia can be either immune-mediated or non-immune-mediated. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia is a condition in which an animal's body sees its own red blood cells as foreign invaders and sets out to destroy them. Non-immune mediated hemolytic anemia is caused from the destruction of red blood cells by other methods, including red blood cell parasites, hereditary diseases, toxins and poisons, or a low phosphorus level. Aplastic anemia, which is insufficient production of red blood cells, is caused by several different disorders, including tumors of the bone marrow, chronic kidney disease, and other disorders which affect the production of red blood cells. Other disorders that result in this type of anemia include infections such as parvovirus or ehrlichia, drugs like chemotherapeutic agents, sulfa drugs, estrogens, and sometimes exposure to radiation and toxins. When a pet has an abnormally low volume of red blood cells and consequently insufficient hemoglobin to carry oxygen to the body's tissues, he experiences oxygen starvation. So some of these symptoms can include weakness, lethargy, exercise intolerance, an elevated heart rate, pale mucous membranes, which is usually the gum color. Sometimes the tongue can become pale pink to white. Mental confusion, a loss of appetite, rapid breathing, as well as collapse. If the patient is passing a large amount of digested blood from their GI tract, then they can have a black tarry stool as well. Anemia isn't difficult to diagnose. The typical diagnostic tests include a complete blood count, a packed cell volume, and a serum biochemistry panel. A blood smear will be able to uh, be analyzed underneath the microscope, and that will evaluate the structure of the red blood cells. A urinalysis may also be performed, as well as a test uh, that could check for Ehrlichia canis if the patient is a dog. The vet might also do a coagulation panel, as well as a mucosal bleeding time test to evaluate your pet's clotting ability. A fecal test might also be performed to check for occult blood loss, which is blood loss from the intestines. A diagnosis of anemia doesn't identify the underlying problem, however. So there are several other tests that sometimes need to be run to determine the cause of the low red blood cell volume. Those tests can include an abdominocentesis to check for fluid or blood in the abdomen due to trauma, a bleeding disorder, a problem with the spleen, or a complication from a prior surgery. Other tests can include abdominal x-rays, an ultrasound, or endoscopy to look inside the abdomen to look for the presence of tumors or ulcers. There also may be tests to identify the presence of mycoplasma and babesia in the blood, sometimes DNA tests to look for genetic defects in susceptible breeds, and tests to determine if there's cancer present in your pet's body. If you think your pet may be anemic, you should make an appointment with your veterinarian as soon as possible. Anemia can be life-threatening depending on what's causing it. Treatment goals for patients with anemia are to control bleeding and restore blood volume, find and resolve underlying causes of chronic blood loss, as well as provide supportive care. Depending on the cause of the anemia, treatment options can include IV fluid therapy to increase blood volume, transfusions of packed cells or whole blood, platelets or fresh frozen plasma, transfusions of bone marrow, antibiotics if infection is present, vitamin K1 for coagulation disorders or certain poisonings, GI protectants, antiparasitic medication, potassium phosphate supplementation, or surgery to fix the source of the bleeding. 
Rarely is anemia related to iron deficiency in pets, as it is in many women. So iron supplementation should be avoided unless your pet is one of the very rare cases where actually iron deficiency is present. Anemic pets must be carefully monitored. Acute aplastic anemia can be reversed within a few weeks once the cause is identified. Chronic aplastic anemia is usually a more serious condition and more difficult to resolve. Blood loss anemia can be resolved as soon as the source of the bleeding is identified and repaired. Anemia caused by cancer has a less optimistic prognosis and depends on the pet's response to treatment for the cancer. Many causes of hemolytic anemia can be resolved once whatever is causing the destruction of the red blood cells has been identified. All right, so now the dog that we actually saw um, this week was um, submersed with fleas. Yeah, it's this dog has been battling fleas for a very long, long time. Um, as many times I try to tell the owner, look, your dog has fleas, you got to get him treated. He's going to get sick. And um, nothing has happened. She says that she's been treating, but she's treating with the stuff from Walmart. No, that stuff from Walmart's not going to work. I could put water on the back of my dog's neck, and, and that'll be about equal, probably. Yeah. I, some people are like, oh, it works great. Well, it's because you've never had a flea problem. Uh, your house has been very well maintained, and where you <clears throat> live has not had an epidemic of fleas or ticks. So, and if you have a large colony of fleas, um, your house is going to breed that. They're going to be flying everywhere. They're on your couch, they're on your bed, they're on your carpet. So if you do treat your dog, what's going to happen is you're, you're treating it, but there's all these yeah, fleas all, all the, over the house. Yeah, so you're going to have to now treat your house as well. This is the biggest, the biggest problem I saw. And one of the problems I saw when I was in Grooming Academy that um, was a little bizarre is that was a leading factor out there. The people actually had more fleas in their house than on their dogs. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see that happening. Um, as groomers, we bring fleas home all the time. They, they hide away in the shoes, in our smocks, in our clothes. It's horrible, but it happens. Um, that's another thing that drives me nuts too, that grinds my gears, <laughs> is when um, customers call and they're like, my dog got fleas from your facility, and they demand us to treat their dog. And a lot of times that is just people wanting free treatment because treatments are not cheap. Uh, you yourself can walk through your grass and pick up a flea and bring it inside the house. You could have picked up a flea from the outside. If fleas are so easily picked up, it's ridiculous. Um, it, it's easier to get fleas in your house than it is to catch a common cold. I mean, truly it is. Um, but once you get the fleas in the house, if you don't act right away, it's going to get bigger. And once it gets to this big ball of cluster nastiness, like what this poor dog had, it's going to take a lot to get stopped. So we did our best, or you did your best, to wash them up. Um, when you have a flea infested dog that has been flea infested for a long time, when they get a bath, all the flea poop turns back into blood. And it becomes like this rust color, mm -hmm. almost a brown color falling off the dog and we had a we had a dog that we talked about about three four maybe five weeks ago in our f episodes um that i had seen the worst case of fleas on a dog in my entire time of doing this i mean it was head to toe it was terrible this dog was bad not as bad but i don't think there's ever going to be anything as bad as the first one i'm talking about this week this dog has obviously had fleas for a very long time and what happens when your blood is ciphered off? Well, become you become anemic. Yep. Um, short supply of blood, you, you know, it, you, you think about it, if you've ever donated blood, what do you act, normally feel afterwards? It's Fatigue. Leth lethargic. Lethargic, exactly. Don't want to move, you get kind of shaky. <clears throat> right. And that's the exact same thing. Like when she was taught, the, the doctor, the veterinarian was talking about uh, parasites. Well, she's talking about worms she's talking about uh the fleas she's ticks. also talking about ticks mm -hmm. ticks if the dog is infested with ticks um 
they suck out a lot of blood. I mean, you think this little thing can't do much. They can. And it gets bad. I mean, their skin withers up. Yes. And becomes stretchy. It becomes rough. Um, it is terrible when you have an anemic dog due to parasites. And I, I actually had, um, I saw a lot of different types of ticks when I was gone. Um, not just the big gorged out ticks. Um, the seed ticks are the yeah, are the ones. Those those are the worst. Seed ticks are hard to deal with because if you don't get the head out, just like if you don't get the head out of the bigger ones, you're screwed. The problem is the seed ticks got a smaller body you can't exactly hang on to. One of the things one of the things I loved the most when I was in Grimman Academy, um, the instructors like, do you have hemostats? Yes. Okay, take them out. Have you ever done it before? No. Well, there's really no wrong way. And yes, I'm like, there yeah, is. there is. <laughs> I said that too. I'm like, yeah, there is. Yeah, that was the uh, signs where I uh, <laughs> yeah, should right? pull you from that salon. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, they, I, they, they, they did not qualify for a mm. grooming salon, no. Yeah, that was that was mine. It's like, uh, yeah. I, mean, and, I, I got him. I got it out. But still, it's like, what the what? So, yeah, these are definitely telltale signs that, you know, from these dicks. Parasites, ringworm, it, oh, not ringworm, uh, um, um, hookworm. hookworm, thank you. Hookworm, tapeworms, any kind of worms, they can do the same thing. Now, all this can be easily treated. Um, anemia is not something that is not curable. Right. Now, you need to be diligent in keeping up with your dog and making sure that it doesn't get to the part where they're so sick they need constant vet treatments. Um, you start by giving them a flea pill. Or if they're, they have ticks, treatment for fleas and ticks, um, topical treatments and such. Speak to your veterinarian and find out which one's the best one for your pet. Um, our Akita cannot have topical treatment because it burns her skin. I did that once and she still is missing fur from where I treated her. I feel terrible. Yeah, good but comfort. This works out really well for the her. The comfort this works out well because she's not in tall grass and she doesn't pick up ticks. And if she does, I remove them and it's not a big deal. I haven't yet. I removed one off of Roxy once, but that's because she decided to go take a long run. <laughs> oh, she made she, me so mad when she did that. That was years ago. <laughs> She's never tried that again. And she hasn't done that again. She she likes her home. She knows how cushy it is at home. All the dogs are she like. She gets a she gets a huge couch and <laughs> and, and the bed at night <laughs> and all the petting she can handle. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of us say no to petting her. And there's all of us in that house that pet her. But uh, so start by treating them for fleas and ticks. If you're not having a tick problem, go with Comfortus and stick with Comfortus. It works within a few minutes of digestion. You don't have to wait for it to travel throughout the body like um, you have to for um, uh, Comfortus or not Comfortus, Avantix, Avantix or Frontline. Even though Frontline is not exactly working in this area anymore, unfortunately. So Avantix seems to be the number one go-to. Uh, first Shield is an amazing topical treatment. When we're in a big city and I can get to a uh, band field, I do that as, be as quick as much as possible. Um, and then you go from treating your dog. If you treat them with Comfortus, you can wash them right away. There needs no time in between. You can wash them, give them the pill, or give them the pill and wash them. Uh, don't use any flea and tick shampoo though. You do that, you're going to over medicate them and that anemia is going to make it even worse to just hang on over medication. Um, treat your house. Oh yeah, treat your house. Fogging your house or what they call flea bombing your house isn't a big deal. I've had to do it many a times because I've been a groomer. We did that to our apartment like four or five times. Uh, and we really didn't have anything except for bunnies. And yeah, that was just you know the and job. You don't exactly have flea treatment for a bunny either, so yeah, that's a battle. Yeah. Anywho, um, we even flea bombed when we had Claire as an infant. Obviously, all animals have to be out of the house. You have to wash all the bedding again. It's tra it's a long process. It's a pain in the butt. But then you get all the chemicals out. You get all the fleas gone. Um, if it's a real bad infestation, you have to do it a couple times, um, a few days in between. Uh, 
If or you, know, you can always just call an exterminator and they, they have stronger stuff and they know how to do it. But make sure that is right for your family because if you have small children running around that's going to put anything in their mouth, you got to be careful. Right. Um, anything you take out of the house might have fleas, so at any point in time you're walking back in your house, you're bringing fleas into it again. Most um, flea bombs will last for a while, uh, but make sure all your animals are treated. And yeah, if you keep the dogs, the dogs treated, you're it fine. Can, it can get very costly. It gets very costly with us. We yeah. have three cats and three dogs. Yep. It gets very costly. But it's better than the dogs chewing them half to death. Um, Katana, I forgot to give a flea pill to, and she is allergic to fleas. I wake up one day, she's chewing, I didn't really think anything of it, dogs chew. I come back home and she's got half her hair pulled out. Yep. Because she is allergic to fleas. And I freak out, I'm the worst pet owner in the whole world. How dare I do this? I completely forgot to give her her flea medicine. And yeah, I have a podcast. You know, I'm supposed to be an expert, and here I screw up. Well, it, these things do happen. I mean, with the busy, you know, hustle of our lives, you know, we're all, you know, very busy. We all have to keep up on, on our jobs and sometimes have to work even I extra got, hard. I got everybody treated because everyone had topical treatment. Katana's the only one with the pill, and I forgot to give her the pill. Oh, but, man. But again... Like I always tell her, you know, we've got so much going on and, you know, these things can slip. Uh -huh. You know, anybody can make that little slip. I mean, it's just life. So, you, you got so much going on. But, you know, just keep it keep it always in mind. You know, if you really want to stop this um, from happening to your pet, these are little signs of things you can probably do with you don't no want, effort. You don't want a $300 vet bill because your dog has a skin infection now. And who is anemic, who is lethargic and won't eat or overeats because that has a parasite in them that keeps eating the food and doesn't let him get or her get any of the nutrition. Uh, just keep up on it and you'll be okay. The anemia uh, won't be such a big deal. Um, as for the other causes of anemia, uh, just keep those in mind. But from that... Uh, yeah. The only part that I can really speak on would be the parasite part. Yeah, and I mean, I think the, the vet actually covered that in, in other aspects. Um, made it more of a medical term, but still, she, she covered it pretty well. Um, anything you want to close on? No, I think that's it. Okay. Well, I'm Chris Green. Have a pet-tastic week. And I'm Sarah Green, making sure everybody realizes life is so short. Play with your pet. Claire? I'm Clay Green, and... Uh, play and have fun with your kittens and your pets. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay, gotta go in my bedtime. It was, without doubt, the worst episode ever. Rest assured that I was on the Internet within minutes, registering my disgust throughout the world.